Hey there, I'm Scott Bremen. I'm a land steward at Duke Farms. I also take care of the native trees and shrubs in our nursery. I'm out here today going on a little adventure to see what kind of trees we can find. I love trees, I think you should too. Come on, let's see what we can find. see here we're walking along a little creek now this is what we would call a lowlands let's talk about this tree right here this tree that we're talking about here is very common in our area it's what we call the red maple or acer rubrum now this tree likes a variety of environments, but naturally, it's really well suited for a lowland or a really wet area. As you can tell, the creek's running right through. Bam, red maple. Let me go grab a branch and we'll talk some more. All right, here we are the branch of the red maple. Now what does this branch tell us? It tells us a lot. We can see here the bark, it's gray and smooth, except at the very tips of the branches, it turns red. Red maple, red branching. Another thing it tells us, we can see right here, a bud has popped, it's bright red. In fact, if you look at like any edge of the forest right now, in your neighborhood or park or anything, you'll see this very light red hue to the woods. And that's most likely this here, red maple popping. It could be another maple, maybe the silver maple, but most likely it's gonna be the red maple. Now what else does it tell us? The branching pattern. This is very important. If you look at this branch, you'll see the main stem comes here, one little branch here, one little branch here, directly opposite. This is what they call opposite branched. The other type in our area that we are most concerned about is called alternate. And we'll talk about that another time. There's an old saying for trees that have opposite branching. Mad horse. Maples, ash, dogwood, horse chestnut. Those are the four main types of trees in our area that you're going to find that are oppositely branched. Here's a close-up version of the bark. You can see it's pretty smooth here. It will start to crack as it gets a little older, but overall still pretty smooth. How else can we identify the red maple? Well, one easy thing that unfortunately we don't have right now is leaves. But I just was able to dig up one, an old one, but we can still get the picture. Now maple leaves always have these broad leaves like this. Just think of the Canadian flag. If you're familiar with that, that's a maple leaf. Now, that one is actually the sugar maple. And if you've been to our sugar maple fest, I'm sure you know all about that. This one's different, they're related, but this is the red maple. And the difference between this and the sugar maple leaf, the sugar maple leaf would have a very pronounced fourth and fifth lobe of the leaf. You can see this is mostly three, one, two, three. Also, the edge of the leaf or the margin is serrated, almost like a knife. If this was a sugar maple, it would be very smooth. So when you put all these pieces together, when you gather all your clues, you find a leaf, check out the bark, look at some buds, then you can really hone in on what the actual species is that we're looking for. So go ahead, see if you can find yourself a red maple in your yard, park, or any outdoor space that's safe to go. Let's see what else we can find.